Mad Men is a series set in the 1960s that follows the lives of the men and women navigating the high-pressure environment of a Madison Avenue advertising agency. In this male-dominated workplace, two women by the names of Joan Holloway and Peggy Olson shatter the glass ceiling by their own means, demeanors, and looks in their respective styles. Joan is a self-assured, bright woman who is noted for her striking, glamorous looks that masks away her intelligence and skills in the eyes of others, hence creation of a space that truly propels her. She utilizes her imagery and sensuality to her advantage to succeed while striving to uphold a traditional gender role, even when it hinders her to fit into the defined mold of a woman during their time. Though at first glance, Peggy is the other side of the coin to Joan. An innocent, quiet, unsure girl entering the workforce that struggles to fit into the ideal set. Going on to developing into a force of nature that not only keeps up with the times, but surpasses it. The two women understand the system, work both within or outside of it, and transcend the ideals to live their real lives rather than striving to fit into who they should quote-unquote be. In the 1960s, social and political developments were accelerating, and the sexual revolution and feminist movement had a significant impact on women's everyday lives. Including appearances, style, and beauty practices. Fashion and beauty may act as a reflection of who people are or want to be as well as a marker of cultural norms and ambitions. Joan and Peggy are at the heart of the glamorous golden age of advertising, from contributing to accounts and keeping the office running. Both women are running part of the show, but they are not one of the boys or the average secretary. This period is one where traditional gender roles are enforced in a multitude of ways from behavior to image, Joan and Peggy are navigating womanhood, identity, and ambitions in a time where womanhood is defined for them. Joan utilizes this to her advantage, the sheet aka wiggle dress of the 50s and early 1960s was Joan's staple silhouette, along with many late 50s moments. She flatters her figure through fitted garments of dual tones that showcase her strength and represent her bold nature amidst adversity, such as emerald, sapphire, and her signature ruby. Emeralds are best known as the gems of truth and love, but in ancient times in Greece and Rome, the gemstone was of the goddess Venus. Joan is frequently likened to various sex symbols by her co-workers. She is aware of this and plays into the part, with her inspirations of Marilyn Monroe and Sophia Loren. Well, Marilyn's really a Joan, not the other way around. <laughs> the costume designer filtered Joan's belief systems into her clothing and styling techniques. You're not like her. Physically a little bit. Don't tell me that makes you sad. Not a joke. This world destroyed her. One day you'll lose someone who's important to you. She is well aware of her outstanding beauty and how beauty in society can function as a form of social currency. In the same manner Monroe created a persona, she creates a space for herself to achieve in business that she would not otherwise have, hence her knowledge and abilities are accepted by those around her. She not only runs the office and conducts the men, but also the women serving as a mentor and providing guidance to other ladies. Hopefully if you follow my lead, you can avoid some of the mistakes I've made here. For instance, when she welcomes in Peggy, a recent graduate of secretarial school. Jamie Bryant, the costume designer, emphasized Peggy's youth and naivety. Her wardrobe throughout the show is a reflection of her beliefs and goals in the same manner as Joan, but she is not adhering to the traditional role of a woman in their time. Why don't you keep it? Have it taken in here and let out there. Don't you want to do well here? I'm the first girl to do any writing in this office. Is that what this is about? I thought you were doing that to get close to Paul. I just realized something. You think you're being helpful. She wears Peter Pan colors, A-line skirts, is barefaced, and her long hair is tied back. Her style is reminiscent of her school days and the schoolgirl look serves as the base upon which she builds her style. Peggy's faith also plays a role in her belief systems and by extension her wardrobe. Plaids are another foundation element by which her style builds upon, even when she has a crisis of faith. 
Another style signature are the layers both literal and not to Peggy. Bryant adorns Peggy with a multitude of patterns, textures, and at times physical garments to be reflective of the amount of depth the character holds. In spite of the fact that Peggy is looking to belong in the corporate world, she herself does not fit the mold and stands out from day one. I didn't get the one I liked. Someone took my color. Why didn't you choose another one? I'm very particular. As opposed to the other girls? I don't know. I don't think anyone wants to be one of a hundred colors in a box. Peggy attempts to escape the male gaze and her costume design coincided with her career development unlike the rest of the women in the show whose costumes were romantic in nature. Her style evolves from girlhood to womanhood with a practical essence that develops with her progressive nature. Into season two, Peggy begins to be more assertive and not only sheds the long hair, but also her secretary status and comes into her own into season three. You had old style. This is not modern office working woman. What are you talking about? I fix you. Peggy's hairstyle changes in unison with her shifts and belief systems from here on out. But some aspects of her look remain steadfast. Peggy every season continues to wear older garments that were previously worn and her wardrobe has a gradual build. New pieces are introduced and the old is held on to. She would not be one to be concerned with trends, but rather presenting herself in the light she sees fit to reach her goals. Which would not necessarily be what is in vogue. Joan's look is also evolving as she experiments with 60s patterns, but her style signature rule prominent. She has her awareness of how fashion serves and how to integrate in trends that align with her as she is style conscious. Thank you, just got it. Menswear over time evolves at a much slower pace than women's wear. As the women's looks evolve rapidly, Peggy follows the menswear path. You think I act like a man? I guess you have to a little. Are we taken seriously? Stop dressing like a little girl. In the same manner that she cannot look to other women for style cues, she does not have another woman to look to for her career goal so instead she looks to Don as a mentor for guidance. This impacts her image as she is evolving as a career woman and takes on the look that will allow for her to fit into this male-dominated workplace of her time. Social psychological and personality science studies have proven that formal business attire increases abstract thinking, hence increased long-term strategizing and creativity. Peggy sports her own version of the look and begins to be adapted to her environment through both DRSS and behavior. Mirroring he rementa. Straighter silhouettes, lines of angular nature, and darker or neutral colors. Psychological this is linked to traits of leadership and competence. It's been my privilege to not only be at your side, but to be treated like a protege, and for you to be my mentor. Into later seasons, Joan and Peggy's looks remain within a specific realm despite their development in contrast to women of the show that are more future-oriented as a defining trait. Carrying the spirit of rebellion and change, such as Megan. If you are interested in the style evolution and the reality behind the quote-unquote ideal woman, the reality behind the ideal woman, Mad Men Betty and Megan style analysis is available for further information. I'm getting married at Christmas. That's wonderful. Viewers get a new glance into Joan's life behind closed doors. She aspires to be the ideal woman of her time, which leads to a troubled marriage and a barren career. Joan, despite her wants and beliefs, is battling the expectations of what it means to be a woman in a traditional gender role won't have their wives think you have a wife who doesn't know how to set a table. Joan is in a robe, loungewear, and very undone practices, mirroring her exhaustion and need for rest. She dresses up to the office in an eye-catching statement ensemble, a look to define her place in the workplace and masks her fear of losing her job through the classic curvy-hugging silhouette in a symbolically bright prideful pink with black ominous flowers printed upon it hint at her struggles. 
She is a woman who cares for her career in a time where women were expected to stay in line in the workplace and become homemakers. The dress is telling of her need to uphold her femininity as a tool. The overdressed aspect caters to defining herself as the crucial focal point and by extension employee in their environment, and how she is continuing to strive for this narrative that promises hope and happiness. Even if it does not genuinely fulfill her. Joan begins to integrate in new styling techniques as well as pieces such as vests with skirts and a newer line silhouette with a higher hemline over the fitted pencil. Now free from molding herself to an ideal, she experiments more not only with her experiences, but also her looks. Joan's goals shift and she begins to strive for more responsibility in her career, her style loosens. She still plays with patterns and upholds the look of the early 60s through her classic adornments such as brooches and jewelry. Her wardrobe begins to become career reflective over romantic. Tell them I want a partnership, not silent, comprising 5% of the business. Well. There's no negotiation. And as her prominence at the ad agency increases, the quality of her clothing follows suit. I can wear boots with that. You know what? I'll take the boots and the tan heels, the chiffon, the red, and this one. Didn't she used to work here? But I think you have me confused with someone else. Joan invests in high-end pieces and experiments more with fashion that reflects her personal taste. Peggy's fashion grows with her confidence. She lets go of Don's ways and understands that she must think for herself rather than follow in the footsteps of another. Her clothing retains girlish roots, but holds masculine leaning essences and develops to be more modern while upholding tradition. In season 7 her signatures of style are defined, a combination of all her style eras balanced out and working in unison with one another. A reflection of her making peace with all parts of herself and becoming confident in navigating her own path rather than unsure walking alone with her ambition being the only force to push her. Into season 7, Joan's style relaxes while retaining glamour. She lets go of her pencil necklace, which the costume designer noted to be symbolic of her fending of with femininity in the office. By letting of this staple, it is evident that Joan has escaped the mold of ideals that she struggled so greatly with. Rather than simply solid colours with the necklace and a brooch, she ups for intricate detailing throughout her looks as she moves up the career ladder. Peggy, rather than desexualizing herself and dressing down in order to be taken seriously, embraces womanhood with an understanding that her femininity and self-expression does not need to be suppressed in order to be respected. The pantsuit was of orange, black, and white heavily stark and symbolic of determination psychologically. Peggy stands in Don's office, rather than the silhouette of Don we as viewers have grown accustomed to seeing. Peggy stands in his place, revealing how she did not just simply open the door of change, but took a bare wall and made the door herself, leaving it open for others to walk through as well. She declines Joan's invitation to work with one another and continues on her path and Joan does the same as the in her own way, running a film production company on her own terms. With her past experiences goes on to becoming a successful business owner and confident single mother, no longer catering to expectations of society. Both Joan and Peggy have shattered the glass ceiling and grown into their own ideas OD identity, goals, and imagery that truly resonate with themselves as people over what is deemed proper for them in the eyes of another. Through the differing utilization of fashion, it is evident how image holds power in society and how those who break the mold of ideals can have their style not only suit them in a beautiful manner, but serve oneself in an embracive manner to adapt to the real self over the idealized conceptual verison to create a true presence in the world. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did please, subscribe, like, turn on notifications, and comment. Thank you so much for watching.